Hey guys, welcome to our Matter of Fact video slash PowerPoint. I'm going to give you a quick little introduction to Matter and you're going to go through this video with the handout or the foldable that we made in class, filling in new definitions to the vocab that we learned about. So let's start with classification of matter. Before we can classify it, we have to learn what it is. So what is matter? We look at the definition. We know that matter can be either a solid, a liquid, or a gas. That probably means that it needs to have some mass and take up some space. So matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. You can go ahead and pause me and add this definition to your foldable. So if matter has mass and takes up space, then what isn't matter? Well, not much isn't matter because matter matters a lot, but some stuff that doesn't matter, well, I'm not going to say your thoughts aren't important, but if you're thinking this PowerPoint is really boring, no matter. If you're thinking that Miss Summit's a little boring when she talks to you in class, that doesn't matter either. So let's get back to what really matters here. Classification, because scientists really like to classify things. Now, there's a reason for that. We classify things because we like to try to understand them, and if we see something new, we want to learn about its identity, and we do that through classification. One way that wouldn't be a great way to classify things would be through its phases. And the reason we don't use phases to classify things is, for example, water. Water exists on the surface of the Earth in three different phases. We see it in both solid, liquid, or gas. So just because it's a gas doesn't mean that that gas is going to be like every other gas or that liquid is going to be like every other liquid. So we definitely don't classify by its phase. We also don't classify by its physical characteristics, such as color. So if you look at the example of gold, sunflower, and the sun, um, they're the same color, but they're very, very different from each other. So what do we do when we classify matter? Well, we base it off of three questions. And those questions are, can it be separated by physical means? Can it be separated by chemical means? And is the matter uniform throughout? Let's go ahead and take a look at these first two questions right here physical and chemical means. Introducing you to a new vocab word, substance. A substance is a specific type of matter with a definite composition. Now, to help you understand that a little bit, let's look at an example. And a great example we always like to use is water because you're very familiar with it despite having not so much background in uh, chemistry. So water is made of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen, as you can clearly see in the image on the screen. Right here is my oxygen, and here are my two little hydrogens right here. That's what we mean by a definite composition. If I go to Germany, if I go to Australia, if I go to the Congo, water is going to be exactly the same. It's going to be made of two hydrogens and one oxygen atom. Now, we know from our density lab that we can see different types of water come out of the tap or different types of water if we add things into it, such as sugar or salt. But in chemistry, when we talk about water, we talk about H2O, and then we specify if things are mixed into it. Now, if I go ahead and change this water, if I take away any of those hydrogens or those oxygens, I'm going to get something very, very different. So go ahead and pause me if you haven't already and add substance into your foldable. Okay, so let's follow this little water droplet over to the next screen. Here's what happens when we separate water. You can see the ocean down below in the screen here, and you can see a giant explosion coming up from it. Now, this explosion isn't actually coming from the separation of the ocean water, but it's coming from when hydrogen has been taken out of water um, and placed inside of a bomb. So this is the picture of a test of a hydrogen bomb, I believe back in the 40s or 50s here. So the properties of hydrogen are very different than the properties of H2O. So when you separate any of those atoms, you get something completely new, completely different, with completely different properties, either chemical or physical. H2O itself, making it a substance, is a type of compound. So that's our next vocab word. A compound, compounds, are pure substances that are the unions of two or more elements. They can be broken into simpler substances, but only by chemical means, and our example is water. So go ahead and pause me and add compounds to your foldable. 
So for compounds, the question we ask is, can it be separated by physical means? The answer is no. That's what makes it a substance. Can it be separated by chemical means? The answer is yes. That's what makes the substance specifically a compound. Now, if we change that and we answer no to the first question, but no to the second, we get something different. So let's go back and look at substance and let me introduce you to a different substance. Let's look at gold now. So we're not looking at water anymore, we're looking at pure gold. Now if we were to look at gold underneath a microscope and we were to be able to see all of the atoms that make it up, what we would see was a whole bunch of atoms that looked exactly the same, same number of subatomic particles. Those would be our protons, our neutrons, and our electrons. And we're going to talk a lot more about those later. So gold is made of all of the same type of atom. What do we call gold? It's not a compound, but it's what makes up a compound. Those, that's what we call elements. So our definition of elements is simplest form of a pure substance made of only one type of atom. So go ahead and pause me and add this to your foldable. So for elements, it cannot be separated by physical means and it cannot be separated by chemical means. So that's gonna be what differentiates an element from a compound but they both cannot be separated by physical means, which makes them both substances. Elements are made of atoms. Atoms are all the same, and atoms of different elements are different. So if we were to look at an element of gold versus, I'm sorry, an atom of gold versus an atom of silver, they would have different numbers of subatomic particles, and that's what makes them unique. So let's go back to our original question again and go back to the question, can it be separated by physical means? When we say, no, it can't, we get substance. But when we say, yes, it can, meaning physical means of just separating them with our hands or using a phase change to separate it, we get something different. So we're gonna go the other way in your foldable. And if you guys are already looking at it, you probably see the term mixture. Two or more substances that are not chemically combined with each other and can be separated by physical means, that's a mixture. The substances in a mixture retain their individual properties. So go ahead and add mixtures into your foldable. So mixtures can be separated by physical means. So now let's talk about the different types of mixtures that we get. We look at our last question, is the matter uniform throughout? Now, when we can answer yes to this question, we get what's called a homogeneous mixture. And if you look at the root word for homogeneous, you see that it means the same. And you might recognize some of the root words in our scientific words. Even if you don't take Latin or you take Spanish or, or French, you might see some words that you recognize. So homogeneous mixtures are mixtures that appear to be the same throughout. They're well mixed. The particles that make up the mixture are very small and not easily recognizable. Go ahead and add this to your foldable. Here are some great examples of homogeneous mixtures. Milk, toothpaste, mayonnaise, water would be an example of a homogeneous mixture. The air would be a great example of a homogeneous mixture. Okay, going back to our original question, or our most recent question, is the matter uniform throughout? So we just answered yes, so what do you think we're gonna answer now? We're gonna answer no, and that means that it's gonna be a heterogeneous mixture. Looking again at that Latin root right there, you get the word, you get the meaning of means different. So we're saying that it looks different. So heterogeneous mixtures do not appear to be the same throughout. The particles are large enough to be seen and to be separated from the mixture. Go ahead and add this to your foldable. Here are some great examples of heterogeneous mixtures, sand and pebbles, oil and water, just like from our density lab, you could clearly uh, differentiate between those two substances when we made our parfait in class, powdered iron and powdered sulfur. Um, another great example, a little blast from your earth science past, oops, wrong way, granite is a great example of a heterogeneous mixture. All those different colors representing crystals of different minerals. Um, a little bonus point if you want to add it in as an example to heterogeneous mixture. Tell me if this is intrusive or extrusive, and as I come around and check your homework, I'll give you an extra point for that, if you get it right. So you're going to have to think about it a little bit. Okay, 
oh, we're not ready for that yet. Let's go ahead and talk about our different types of heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures. So we're going to look up into the left-hand corner of our next line, and we're going to talk about solutions. A solution is a type of homogeneous mixture formed when one substance dissolves in another. Now this is going to get a little bit wordy here, but I'll explain it to you in a minute. A solution always has a substance that is dissolved and a substance that does the dissolving. The substance that is dissolved is called the solute, and the substance that does the dissolving is the solvent. So go ahead and pause me and write this down right now so we can start to sort through it. Let me give you some examples to help you understand this. So a solvent, the universal solvent, could be water. Most things dissolve in water. Not all, as we learned again from the density lab, but most things dissolve in water. So when you take, for instance, salt to make the salt water again that we use in the density lab, the salt would be the solute, the water would be the solvent. And if we go down in our uh, solutions in the lab, all the way towards the end where we had our big beaker full of corn syrup, Corn syrup would just be a very, very thick solution, a super saturated solution of sugar in water. So the sugar would be the solute, again the water would be the solvent. And a great example of a solution that you might not think about because you always think about fluids and solutions, gases. The gas in this room, the gas in the air outside would be an example of a solution. So all those other gases are dissolved in nitrogen because nitrogen has the highest percentage in our atmosphere. Okay, after solution, solution being a homogeneous type of mixture with really small particles, we're going to go to the next type of mixture which could be either heterogeneous or homogeneous depending on the type. And we call that a colloid. A colloid is a heterogeneous or homogeneous mixture where the particles are mixed together but not dissolved. The particles are relatively large and are kept permanently suspended. That means they do not settle over time. If you watch it, the particles don't go down, you don't see, any, see anything settling, then it could be a colloid. The particles are large enough to scatter light, and this is one way you can tell a colloid apart from a solution. Go ahead and add this to your definition. A great example of a colloid is a cloud, and that's not a very good picture that you see right there, um, but a cloud would be a perfect example of a colloid. Some other ones from a previous screen we looked at, the milk, the toothpaste, and the mayonnaise would be other coll colloids. So sometimes in a colloid you can see the particles, and sometimes you can't, and we're going to look at some examples of colloids in class, in our next class. Okay, last but not least, we have suspensions. So suspensions are always heterogeneous, and it's where you see visible particles that settle out over time. So these particles do go down to the bottom. The particles are large enough to scatter light. So they're big enough to settle, big enough to scatter, scatter light as well. So a great example of a suspension would be muddy water. Oh, oh, and I did a muddy water search, and this is what I came up with, so I thought I'd throw it in there just in case there's any Muddy Water fans out there um, singing the Delta Blues. So let's look at a picture of some Delta Blues right here. And this would be Delta Blues for Port St. Lucie because right there uh, you have a whole bunch of effluent coming out of the Caloosahatchee leaving Lake Okeechobee and uh, going the other way, not to our west coast here in Florida, but to the east coast. And you see all that brown murky water hitting the big, beautiful blue Atlantic Ocean. Well, that brown murky water has a whole bunch of clay and sand suspended in it. And when it hits the Atlantic Ocean, it just drops right down to the bottom. It settles out over time. So you get what's called the delta. You may have learned about this in the past in earth science. You can also see pictures of Mississippi Delta with a whole bunch of sand, um, basically like a big giant sandbar at the bottom of the Mississippi. Uh, we learned a little bit about why this is bad in our density parfait lab, um, but there's a lot of other reasons that this is a big issue for Florida right here, but there's a great example of a suspension. Hopefully you have your entire foldable filled out. If I forgot to tell you to stop and fill something out, then go back and double check your definitions. We're going to be using these in class in both a group activity and then a little group lab where you're going to be learning to identify different 
solutions, colloids, and suspensions based on your understanding of definitions of mixtures. And then we're going to really dig into elements and compounds in our next two chapters. Um, I will see you guys in class. Hope you enjoyed this little video and uh, hope you have a great night.